every horror film ever made from 1895 to present. A list that is trying to contain every horror film that is not lost and is found on the Letterboxd database. Now this is a series that we're all used to at this point. My first two episodes were internationally renowned. Everyone already knows what we're doing here. But I looked at the list the other day because I didn't want to just do the same thing for a third time, right? But then I looked at the list and checked this out. So you'll notice how it says list will be constantly updated, right? So then I looked down at it and I saw the top comment was update, 2021's films are officially added. So then I realized that when I did episode one, there's only like 180 pages, but looking right now, it says there are 213. So I figured, okay, we'll do the same formula for three times. It's like tic-tac-toe, you know, three strikes, you're out. So uh, next time we'll have some sort of wacky gimmick worked up, but for now we're doing 2021 updated letterbox lottery challenge. Okay, so I'm gonna give a quick refresher of what we're gonna be doing here, and I have a couple of specifications to me. So basically I have here a list of 26,000 films. This list is broken up into 213 pages, and then on each page there is 20 rows and five columns. And so what we're gonna do is I have three random number generators, and we're gonna select one film out of a list of all of these. A couple of things to keep in mind. This time I have a couple of filters turned on just to get rid of short films, TV shows, and unreleased titles. That way I can make sure whatever film we end up getting is a film that actually exists. And if you look at the number, you'll notice that instantly 5,000 films got taken down. So we're actually, we only have a pool of 21,000. I know that's probably a deal breaker for some of you, but uh, I think in the long run it'll uh, prove to be... I have the list sorted by release date newest first, and uh... I think we're ready to jump right into it. So first of all, we gotta see the page number. Okay, page 155. Okay, so that's about halfway through the list, and since it's chronological, is that gonna be, what, uh, 70s, you think? All right, let's see, page 155. Uh, what year is this? 90s? 90s! Okay, right off the bat, this is not looking good. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe we can save this. I'm gonna look. Maybe there's something that I've seen on here. Okay, we got Killer Tomatoes Strike Back. Okay. We got Silent Night, Deadly Night 5. <laughs> I guess 1991 was really just a bad year, because none of these look like real movies. Okay, we might be in for a rough episode, but let's just take a deep breath and look at what row we're gonna get. And then on that row there will be five films, and we'll look at those five in depth. There's gotta be one. That's all I need. I just need one. Okay, row 14. Let's see. So we got Door Into Silence. Okay. Got- oh, wow. That's like- it's an actual Godzilla film. Okay. Critters 3. Final Approach, <laughs> and Teenage Exorcist. It's not gonna be a good episode. All right, let's, let's take a look at these. All right, Door to Silence. Immediately, the first thing I notice is that it's only available on Amazon to buy the DVD. So, uh, unless this whole thing's on YouTube, we might have to pick another movie. Okay, 2.6 isn't terrible. We've, we've definitely had worse films here on this program. I am a pretty big fan of the poster, though, not even gonna lie. Okay, let's take a look at the Godzilla one. I'm not quite up to date on all of the Godzilla lore. I was not aware that they were making them in the 90s. So, this could be a very interesting one. And this one is also only on DVD. I really... <laughs> what was going on in 1991? Alright, next up we got Critters 3. In what appears to be a cross between Critters and the Towering Inferno, the residents of a shoddy LA apartment block are chased up to the roof by hordes of eponymous hairy horrors. I... have not seen the first two of these. 
but this looks very interesting. Okay, and it's actually available on places, so I might not have to spend money on a DVD for this episode. This is epic. Alright, next up we have Final Approach, which apparently is not available <laughs> anywhere. Final Approach deals with the mental condition of amnesia when stealth test pilot Colonel Jason Halsey is involved in an air disaster. A psychiatrist, Dr. Dio Gottlieb, attempts to help Halsey to recover his memory, but his motives seem strained. Is Gottlieb giving professional help, or is he a counterintelligence agent sent to debrief Halsey? Okay, my prediction is, if we watch this one, we're gonna get one cool sequence with, like, him crashing in the air, and then the rest is gonna be really, really, really boring. Okay. Last, but certainly not least, we have Teenage Exorcist. Diane is a repressed, neurotic grad student. I feel like if the description of your movie starts with that, you should instantly, like, not make the movie. Okay, I don't know why, but I'm just, like, actually getting really, really sad right now, because I'm realizing, like, I'm not, I'm not even gonna finish reading it, because I just saw... <laughs> Amazon disc. I think I think this is the worst selection out of any of them. Like I, I don't want to watch any of these. Like our best hope is that Godzilla is funny. Everything else just looks miserable. <laughs> but hey, what's a YouTube video without some funny moments? So let's spin the, the wheel of the worst. Final approach! <laughs> the only one not available <laughs> even on disc! Alright, I'm gonna see if I can like find this on the internet somewhere. <gasps> wait, wait! <laughs> Why is the whole thing on YouTube? Okay, so we got a 360p YouTube video for an entire 100 minute movie. I salute you. Okay, wait, look at this description. I love this film, and so would the paying public if they got the chance to see it. And yet only released on 12-inch Laserdisc and rental VHS, rarely shown on TV. Like, I, th I think we're actually uncovering some sort of cinematic masterpiece that, that, like, the man doesn't want you to see. Plus, the whole thing is on YouTube, so, like, you could go watch this right now. Pause the video. But either way, we got our film. Final Approach, 1991. This has absolutely been the worst uh, recording process yet. I was low energy, and I apologize. I did not really have much to say. I kind of rambled on. Wasn't as funny. Didn't really have as many funny bits. Maybe as the first or even the second one. But I'm kind of tired. <laughs> And now I have to watch Final Approach 1991. It's what it is. It's what it is. Brothers. Okay, my prediction is if we watch this one, we're gonna get one cool sequence with like him crashing in the air. And then the rest is going to be really, really, really boring. Uh, turns out I don't need to make a review for this because I actually already described it perfectly. Black Magic Genesis System status check. Roger. Tommy? Everything is green. Overcoat, everything's green. Except Thompson's got some static cling in his underwear. Well, that's a fried egg. An egg? Yeah, it's a fried egg. It's like a splattered in a frying pan. An egg. That being said, this is easily the best thing I've watched on this show. So I am just gonna go ahead and say, like, just go and watch this, because number one, uh, you'll get more out of the review, obviously, if you've seen it. But number two, I mean, whole thing's on YouTube, literally pinned comment, uh, description, whatever, it's gonna be there. Uh, number three, like, I actually kind of recommend it, 
uh, but with like five disclaimers. So I do want to clarify that like this is still like a spoiler free review and everything, but uh, you would get more out of it if you had seen the actual thing. But if you don't want to, that's okay. So to start with, we'll just sort of get the easy part out of the way. What is this movie about? So basically, it's exactly as advertised. A pilot named Halsey is in some sort of accident and wakes up in a psychiatrist's office with some form of amnesia. My recollection is a bit vague. And yes, the entirety of this movie does take place in this room. Sort of. We hear Halsey's thoughts for the first half of the movie, and while it isn't great... Is she talking to me? She's got to be talking to me. There's nobody else in here. I still think the way that it's kind of like roughly cut in with the rest of the normal dialogue is actually kind of cool, even if it probably was unintentional. Jason, Jason, Jason. Jason? Jason, Jason. How oh, do I know? I know you're uh -huh. in here somewhere. Not the couch. Here we are. You'll think you're nuts. The chair. Take the chair. Go ahead, Jason. Actually, the editing is the best part of the movie. In fact, it kind of saves it towards the end, but I'll, I'll get to that later. We're introduced to the psychiatrist, Dr. Gottlieb, who instantly starts acting nothing like a psychiatrist. You know, craziness is a relative concept. I think that's where the problems start to kick in. The movie is essentially just this big question. Like, the entirety of the conflict and the plot are just who is Gottlieb and what is happening or has happened to Halsey. And, like, beyond that, it's just incredibly repetitive and sort of just, like, basic. <laughs> Essentially, the entire conflict just starts to feel manufactured after, like, the first 20 minutes. But... It's not that bad. I'm not gonna go too in depth to the plot because there is actually like a pretty definitive like twist or reveal to the ending. So I'm just gonna sort of recommend you go and watch it if you want. Like seriously, the link is in the description. You can just go watch it right now. But it, it's not a masterpiece, but it's not that bad. Easily the coolest part about this whole film is just the flashback sequences. The way they're edited is just so cool and I just could not get enough of it. A tree. A tree. Uh, which is a good thing, considering it's the majority of the film. I think the best comparison I have for this is surprisingly Jacob's Ladder 1990, uh, which if you have watched a previous video of mine, you know is uh, pretty high praise for a random movie. I think it actually like genuinely does reach a point where the tension and disorienting feeling that it presents like actually peaks. It's about two thirds of the way through the film. Gottlieb really does a good job of being just this over the top creepy guy. Well, we're not talking about your uh, normal garden variety falling on the floor, writhing around seizures here. With, uh... You mean there weren't grand mal seizures? Well, I don't know what the technical term is. <laughs> like that. Even though that kind of ruins the idea that he's like a proper psychiatrist and like the mystery is sort of becomes bogged down in the theatrics of the whole thing. Again, I think the weakest part of this is just that beyond the sort of flashback, highly edited sequences, like it might as well have just been the theater piece of these guys just talking back and forth and yelling, oh, what's going on? What am I doing here? You're not a psychiatrist. Am I a psychiatrist? They don't really do anything other than talk, which is fine for the most part because it actually does get pretty interesting 
but I mean, it, it just does not justify the runtime, and as a film and a narrative plot, it just really does not make much sense. I mean, it's just the kind of thing that really falls apart the more you think about it. Like, if you stop and think about it, we know from the beginning that Halsey isn't in any actual danger, because we saw that he's very clearly in a waiting room with, like, a completely non-psychotic receptionist. So it's pretty clear that if Gottlieb is some sort of serial killer, he sort of infiltrated a legitimate psychiatry office. Like, the more you think about it, you know that, like, clearly something isn't right here. Like, this isn't just a normal psychiatrist, but also, like, he's not not a normal psychiatrist. Like, he's not some, like, evil being or something, because it's very clear that he's just, like, a guy. It doesn't quite follow dream logic. Again, I'm trying not to spoil it, but if you need films to have strict rules and very traditional plot beats, this is definitely not for you. Like, you will not enjoy this at all. Like, personally, I kind of enjoy the type of film that doesn't really have a plot and doesn't really make much sense, but it still is barely able to keep itself together and come out with a decently strong ending. For me, sticking the landing is, like, really important in sort of making or breaking this type of, like, non-traditional, like, essentially ex borderline experimental thing, I think this just barely, like, skims the line of not quite making it. But I think it comes out just far enough for it to work in the end. Other than that, there really isn't much to say. If this was, like, bad, I would have gone plot point for plot point and sort of discuss it. But I mean, since I kind of want you guys to actually watch it and, like, sort of shout this thing out, I, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. Plus, also, there just isn't much plot to discuss. Like, I mean, there's some, like, certain, like, beat-for-beat beat things, but, like, for the most part, like, I think you've gotten a pretty good idea of it. Uh, yeah, just, just watch it. Uh, it's, n it's not, it's not bad. Or, or don't, or don't watch it. You, do, you can do what you want, I think. Also, uh, apparently, I just found this out, this is the first film to be, like, originally recorded, mixed, and mastered in pure digital sound. So, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> Pretty random for this, like, 1 in 23,000 thing, but... Uh, it's pretty neat, uh, even though it never got released outside Laserdisc, but yeah, nice. Uh, I, 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 this is kind of like, I'm really phoning it in right now, like, I, I, this is not a good review. This is not a good video. The last one wasn't good either. And I guess that's the thing when you pick one out of 23,000, or no, it's like 28,000, isn't it? It's been, it's been literally like a month since I picked it, and... Like, there's no good reason that it took me this long. Well, actually, I was gone for, like, 18 days, so I guess that's... You know, and actually, yeah, there is kind of a good reason I didn't do this sooner, but... I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll get a new Alien Apocalypse eventually. Um, I'm working on one big, like, big review, which I want to have out by the end of the summer. Um... Yeah, that's literally it. Uh, I'm, I'm done with the... Time. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid ours is up. <laughs>